I'm Connor Deppy. And I'm Dakota Goodrich. The basic idea of our project is to make a game where the computer picks a random number between 1 and 9 and displays it on the top line of our LCD, and the user presses that number on the keypad and it displays it on the bottom line, and as time goes on, the game progressively goes faster and displays characters faster. So on the left, we have the schematic uh, for the system, and then on the right is the physical realization of everything. Um, and as far as which uh, components are involved, we have the LCD, um, and then the keypad, the three buttons, and the buzzer. Um, almost all of the ports used on the microcontroller, or all of the pins on the microcontroller are on port B. That's the, the LCD, the keypad, and the buzzer. And then the only ones that aren't are the three buttons that are using port C. On the LCD, we have PB0 through PB5 set as outputs. On the keypad, we have the rows set as outputs as well as open drain. The columns of the keypad are set as inputs. The buttons are set as inputs as well, and the piezo buzzer is an output. So to go through first all the criteria that we decided uh, we would keep and kept all throughout the design process, uh, the first, um, we wanted it to display random characters on the top line, and that is still what it does. Um, next, we wanted the user's character to appear on the bottom line, which it does. Then if the user's character doesn't match the top line, they lose, um, which is it does as well. Then uh, when they fail, we wanted to display the score, which was the correct number of characters that the user entered, and display that score when they lose. Um, then we want it to start with a welcome message. Um, and we want the green button to start the game, the yellow button to pause the game, and the red button to reset the game back to the welcome screen. And when the user loses, we wanted the buzzer to play a short song. This was included uh, as per Dr. Phillips request, and we chose that that song would be the Scotsman as motivated by his offering extra credit if we were able to pull that off, which we did, and we will show later in the video. So the first criteria that we decided to change was that we would use all 16 uh, buttons on the keypad, but we decided to just do numbers one through nine to make it easier for the user to understand. Um, another criteria we changed is that we wanted to start, our initial uh, plan was to have this top line start displaying at a speed of two hertz and then increase continually and not have a max speed. Um, when, when testing it, we decided to change that to go it now starts at one hertz, so a little slower, and then it reaches a max speed at 1.7 hertz. And we found in testing that that was uh, just noticeable enough of a difference and um, that the two hertz was, was way too fast for the user and going even faster would have been way too difficult and not enjoyable. So we decided to have a max speed um, so it makes it more enjoyable for the user all throughout playing the game. Originally, we decided that if the user gets two characters behind the computer that they would lose, but we decided to remove this feature because people can get as behind, as far behind as they want and still catch up. And, you know, sometimes you'll almost hit one and it'll mess you up, but we decided that it'll make the game last longer and it overall made the experience better. Yeah. So now the only uh, way to fail the game is by pressing the wrong character, not by getting so far behind. Um, at least until the top line laps the user. Uh, and then um, we just initially planned that the game would reset back to the welcome screen after waiting for just a few seconds while displaying the score. Uh, but we changed when we decided to include the song, we changed that um, it would stay on the score screen until after the song finishes. And then the user presses the red button to reset it back to the, to the welcome screen. So those are all the criteria that we decided to keep and or change and the reasons why. In our program, we include several global variables, including top and bottom line arrays, top and bottom line indexes, a key map, and the four flags that we will set in our interrupts. Shown here are our interrupt handler functions. Um, and as you can see, all of the, all they do is set the interrupt flags variables that we made and then turn off the system interrupt flag. Um, initially, we had each of these actually do uh, all the functions that they're supposed to inside of each of the handlers, but we found that they would interrupt other important functions and that was causing errors. So we simplified all of them. So now each interrupt again just sets a flag that we made. And then in main, we check each flag and then actually handle the uh, respective function. 
In our main function, we start by initializing all of the uh, components to the right input and output settings. We first display the welcome message, which is just good luck centered on the screen. Then we enter the infinite while loop where all of the main logic happens. This is where, as described before, we check each flag, and then if it is set, then we respond to it. At this point, we can explain another big um, part of the, of the program is that it's all dependent on two states. If the state variable is a one, then that's the running state, and if it's a zero, then it's the pause state, um, and nothing will happen. The top line won't display, and it, we won't read characters from the bottom line. The green interrupt is the first one. If that flag is set, then it runs the game. If the yellow flag is set, it pauses the game. And if the red flag is set, it resets all of the necessary variables and goes back to displaying the welcome message right there. If we're in the go state, we will first get two random variables, the row and the column between numbers 0 and 2. That will decide what number is randomly displayed using our key map. Then the program will set the position in the array that we're at to the random variable, the random key selected, and the next position to a blank to allow the user to know where they are. After that is set in the array, the character is displayed using the LCD display, and then the cystic load value is decremented to make it go faster. At this point, we check for a key press from the user using the keypad scan function. Then if we're in the running state, uh, it will go in and put that key into the right spot as per the bottom index in the array for the bottom line. Um, and it will also put a space in the next one similar to the top line. Then it will display the bottom line and check if it is correct. Um, it checks the bottom line at the appropriate index compared to the top line at the same index. And if they don't match, it goes into this fail logic where it resets all the variables, displays the score, which is just the bottom index, um, and then resets the system load. So then when the user plays it the next time, it will go start back at the slow speed. And then finally, it will play the song, which we will show next. The song function calls another function called the note function many times, uh, one for each note in the song. Um, and the note function is dependent on two parameters. The first is the frequency and then the duration. A faster frequency results in a higher pitch. Um, so we found sheet music for the Scotsman and then also had a table where we uh, it matches each note to each frequency. So, and then each calling of it is just that frequency. And then the timing is how long that the note is played. Uh, in this, we had to, we had to test how fast uh, it actually was using an oscilloscope to find to change this number uh, to know what the actual frequency would output, um, as well as this number to know how long the duration actually would end up being. To start with the demonstration, we will show all of the button logic working, and then we will show the max speed of the top line uh, displaying characters, and then we'll end with a short demonstration of actually playing the game and purposely failing to show the song at the end. So to start, this is the welcome screen, and then green will start it. Then while it's going, yellow pauses, and green from yellow will resume it. And then red will put it back to the welcome message, and green to play again. And now to reset it from the pause state, so yellow pauses and then red resets. And then playing it again, while in the green state, green once again does nothing. So now we will cut to show the, the max speed that the top line displays characters. So this is the display now going at the max speed for the top line. Um, and so we'll compare it to the, to the initial speed. But now I will reset it again and do a quick demonstration of actually playing the game. And I'll go long enough to show it uh, loop around onto itself when it laps to the other side. And now to purposely get it wrong, 